Welcome everyone to the second in a series of videos on Tailspire beta release. This video here will hopefully give you some tips and tricks in how to maneuver and do different things in Tailspire, setting up for your campaign as a GM, and some of the different tools that are going to help you with that. So without further ado, uh, we're going to go into begin. In my first video, we talked about creating campaigns and, and joining. So we're just going to go into my test campaign and play. And in here, I have already set up right here a nice little two-room building that we are going to use for explaining the some of the tools in Tailspire. So in the last video, we talked about the hide volumes. So we're going to explore that a little bit more. Because as a GM, when you have players in your game, there are things that you do not want them to see. Uh, specifically, you don't want them to see parts of the map until they've actually gotten there, their characters have arrived there. Because you don't want them to have, be able to game the system. now. Most players are good about that, and even if they accidentally see something, they're, they're not going to take advantage of it. But it, let's just remove the temptation altogether. So this is where hide volumes come into play. So in here, I can open up some GM tools by hitting tab. This brings up these GM tools. We will talk about all of these, uh, but we're going to start with this hide volume. So if I click on hide volume, it gives me this create hide volume icon. Now with this, I can click and drag a volume around something that it will then hide whatever is within that three dimensional space. We already looked at how to drag volumes, uh, so I'm not gonna get into too many specifics of that. However, I do want to show you uh, a few tips on this you need to be very specific with what, where you're putting your hide volumes. Because if I just come and say, I'm gonna create a hide volume here, and I say, yeah, I'm gonna click down in this corner, I'm gonna drag it here, and then go up, and I'm gonna hold down my center mouse wheel so I can move to see the height, okay? Because I wanna be a little bit precise. That looks about good. Oh, look what happened. It grabbed that corner of the wall because I was too close and I included it. You have to be very specific with where you locate these hide volumes. I want to hide everything in this room, but I don't want to be removing sections of a wall because that just looks horrible. So while I'm in here, I can now choose to toggle the visibility of that hide volume. And I can also delete it. And right now, I'm going to delete it because I didn't want to get rid of that section of the wall. So you have to be very specific about where you place your hide volumes. So in here, I know that, well, if I go right to here, this, uh, the way I've built these rooms is none of these walls are actually connected to the floor. These are sections of wall individual uh, and separated from floor sections. And I've built the floor here out of just one by one tiles. So I know that there's a tile right up here and that wall sits on it, tile here, that wall sits on it, etc. all the way around, both rooms. So for the most part, I'm really not gonna have much that's all the way against the edge. So I, want, I can make sure that I don't get any walls by coming in a little bit from that edge when I do my hide volume. Because if I'm just touching something, it will accept it and hide it. Okay. And notice the difference here compared to other hide volumes, or to other volume generation, is when I go to choose something, it doesn't jump, so it's not giving me an indication. 
which is why you have to be very careful with hide volumes. So I'm going to bring this down into this corner. Now, I'm not even on the tile for that one little wall piece that went that disappeared on us last time. So now if I drag this up and again, I'm using my center mouse wheel because I want to be somewhat precise on this height. Ah, look, the wall piece is still there. So I've got that entire section covered. And once again, I can toggle visibility or delete it. Well, how do I know that I'm actually hiding things? Well, let's go with another hide volume. And this time, I'm going to come all the way through here. Alrighty. I'm actually going to get this wall. See, oh, I just peeked at the wall top there, so I'm getting that entire section. Because from the outside, the players wouldn't necessarily know that wall and that door existed. So I'm hiding it. And now you can see that entire wall in the door is gone. And if I toggle visibility, boom, there they are. This works as well for any items and stuff I place inside. So here, I'm going to go into my tools uh, and all my different tiles for building. And I'm going to pick some quick little props. Uh, just put a couple guys, you know, little armor stands in there. Put some in here. Okay. And now, let's go back into my GM tools, into my hide volumes. Toggle visibility. Oh, look. Everything within there disappears. So now, I have no fear of my players being in this game board with me. Because they can, you know, move around all they want, all around outside. You know, they can angle their cameras, look here. The only thing that they know for sure is that I've got a building here. Okay? They might be able to make some inferences like, oh, look, that's a corner piece. There might be a wall there. But big whoop they don't know everything for sure and they have no idea what's inside but then when it comes time for them to play okay let's exit out of my GM tools and you'll notice all this stuff is red because it is hidden I can see this the player cannot see that okay I can only see it because I am the GM and I did this but then the player can come and move their mini up to the door and let's give you an example of that I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a creature and let's get us a hero uh, and it's gonna be this cleric burly cleric let's put him on here on the game board and I'm gonna click on the, the tools here and hide all that so I've got this cleric here and so he's gonna move up to the game board so notice I've clicked on him. I can just left click and drag him and drop him wherever I want. Or if he's highlighted like this, I can hold down the shift key. Oh, I'm in the build mode. Sorry, if you exit build mode and he's highlighted, I can hold down the shift key and use the arrow keys to, to move him around however I want. Okay. Now, with a player controlled miniature like this, he would not be able to go through this door. In fact, let's do that. I am going to, as a GM, I'm going to give player permission to myself for this one. And then I am going to switch to being a player just so that we can see. I am now the player. I can move my guy around. Now I can step on top of the wall and step over. But if I put a roof on this, I can't get in there okay and I can't actually go through that door I can't walk my way through it but if I right click and say open I can open the door now because I am currently the only one in this map and I am the GM and the player it allowed me to open that door without an issue however if I was the GM 
and a player came along and wanted to open up this door, they would do the same thing. They would right click on the door and they would say, okay, I want to open. It will pop up a notification up here on this side of the screen that gives you the option to either allow that to happen or to deny it. Sometimes doors are locked. Someone can try to open it and it won't work. But if I have the door open, then the player can walk in and as the GM, I would have my GM tools up and I would say, oh, I've got a hide volume there. They've opened the door. They should now see all that stuff. So now the players can see, oh look, there's stuff in that room. Okay. Then they could once again head on over to the, the next door they could attempt to open that door. So we've got our player here. Goes, hey, let's uh, let's go this way, and let's open this door here. Open, and then as the GM, since I would be here, I can once again be in my hide volumes, toggle the visibility, and there it goes. Now they can see what's in there. All right, so that is dealing with the the hide volumes of these GM tools. I'm going to end this video now, but the next one, I am going to look at placing atmosphere blocks, marker blocks, and cutscene blocks. Uh, if you find these videos useful, please give it a, a like and uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell. All those fun little YouTube things, really appreciate it, and. Uh, We'll see you in the next video.